What happens when you recognize a foreign currency amount at one point in time and the exchange rate changes before you settle it? Obviously, you either have more money or less money than expected. In this video, I'll explain the tax effects. When the exchange rate changes between when you record something and when you pay or receive it, you have a foreign exchange gain or loss. Book and tax rules both require recognition of exchange gain or loss in such case. They differ mostly in the timing. For books, partial recognition also happens at any financial statement reporting date. Here's an example. I have an accounting business in the U.S. and record everything in dollars. I hire a German accountant to do some work for me in Europe. He sends me bills in euros, and I pay these bills a month later. I accrue his December 2016 bill for 10,000 euros when the exchange rate is 1.1. That is, 1 euro equals $1.10. So I accrue $11,000. I pay the bill in January 2017. My bank charges me only $10,750 for the 10,000 euros. Hooray! I get to pay $250 less than I accrued. This $250 is a foreign exchange gain for book and tax purposes. For tax purposes, I recognize this gain as ordinary business income in 2017 when I pay the bill. Accruing the expense is a 988 transaction, and settling it is a recognition event. The source of this gain is the same as the source of the income from the QBU that had the expense. In my case, the source will be domestic, since the gain relates to my U.S. business. Source matters for foreign tax credit and for U.S. tax on non-residents. These tax rules apply to settling any Section 988 transaction. A 988 transaction is any of a variety of things if and only if they are denominated in a non-functional currency or determined by reference to a non-functional currency. These things include accruing an item of income or expense, just like in my example, if the item is to be settled later. My functional currency is dollars, so the invoice in euros is in a non-functional currency. 988 transactions also include acquiring or becoming an obligor under a debt instrument. So if your functional currency is dollars and you borrow money in euros, the borrowing is a 988 transaction. When you make payments on that loan, any gain or loss is recognized and is ordinary, and the source, foreign or domestic, is the same as the QBU's income. This can have problematic results for personal items, not associated with a QBU, for individuals, like home mortgages. The 988 regulations define what events trigger recognition. These include disposition of non-functional currency, realizing an item of accrued income or expense, and settling a forward or futures contract. There are a lot of additional special rules not covered in this video. I have a set of examples available on taxesintheusa.com under Chapter 39 that I use to help my class understand Section 988 better. In Part 5, I'll cover forwards and futures, character and source of income, briefly mention interbranch transactions, and summarize all five parts. Mm -hmm.